Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, so today what we're going to do is we're going to continue on with um, with Ampere's law. Um, and actually, I want to go through um, the, I don't remember exactly what the question was uh, uh, yesterday in class. Um, so uh, the, the second question is, is pretty important. Um, so let's go ahead and go through that one and then uh, go through the homework. So if I remember roughly, uh, the question from class yesterday said that you had some current density J as a function of R, which is going to be equal to uh, J0 R squared divided by uh, A squared and in the X hat direction. Um, this, this might have been hollow on the inside or not, but uh, all that's going to change is what the, the lower bound of the limits of integration are. But the, the thing that I really wanted to, to talk about here was how do you do these problems if your current density is uh, varying with the, uh, the radius? So what we want to do is we want to find what the magnetic field is everywhere for this problem. And the way that we're going to do that is to apply uh, Ampere's law. So Ampere's law says the integral over some closed loop of b dot dA is equal to mu naught times I in. And so there are going to be two regions here. The first region is where R is less than A. And the second region where R is where R is greater than A. And so the first thing that we can do is we can, we can say, okay, well, this, this current density is going to be pointing the positive x hat direction. So this is the x direction, which means the current is going to be moving left to right. And so, oop, bad mistake. This is not a dA, this is a dL. I'm going to head myself to, uh, to a Faraday's law. This is an uh, integral of b dot dL. Um, so the first thing that we can do is we know the current's going this way. We can draw some Amperian loops here. And so the first loop is going to come around like this. And again, we can, we can use the right-hand rule to see that uh, it's, uh, it's going around uh, this way. And then the second one is going to go like that. Okay. So now what we can do is we can evaluate this left-hand side of Ampere's law. And that's to say that the integral of b dot dl is equal to uh, the integral of b times dl. And then uh, we can go through the whole process of, um, of evaluating this. But ultimately, what we end up seeing is that this is going to be b times 2 pi r times uh, nothing. It's just b times 2 pi r. Okay. So now what we want to do is we want to find what i in is, uh, first for the region where r is less than a. So when we do that, what we want to realize here is that the loop is only going to go up to some uh, variable distance r. And we want to find what the current is that passes through uh, just that portion there. And so what this says then is that I in is equal to the integral of j dot dA. What's uh, dA in this case? Anybody remember? Yes, 2 pi r dr, uh, and this has a, an x hat too because it's a dA vector. So this is, uh, it points in this direction. Okay. So now what we can do is we can plug in our j and uh, evaluate this. So this is going to be j0 r squared divided by a squared integral 2 pi r dr. Uh, nothing cancels, so we're, we're good here. But now what we need to do is we need to think about what the limits of integration are. So in the region where r is less than a, uh, what should my lower limit be? Zero, good, because we're, we're, we want to find the current that's going through this area, and that area starts at zero, and it goes up to what? R. R, good. So this goes zero to R. So then we can do this integral. This is the integral of uh, R cubed uh, dr. And so this is going to give me an R to the fourth over um, four. That's going to cancel one of the factors of two here. And so this says that this is going to be J zero pi uh, R to the fourth divided by uh, um, divided by uh, f 2, because I, I, I canceled that factor of 2 here, uh, 2 times uh, a squared. Okay. So now we can plug this into uh, uh, Ampere's law here. And, and what we see in the end is that uh, b 2 pi r is equal to mu naught j0 pi r to the fourth over 2a squared. We can cancel a factor of pi. And uh, we can move the, the 2 and the r over here as well. So we cancel a, a, factor, a factor of r. And so for r is less than a, uh, b is, as a vector now, is going to be equal to mu 
not j zero r cubed divided by four a squared uh, in the theta hat direction. Okay, let's check my algebra real quick here. So it's mu naught j zero r cubed two comes over and yeah yeah this looks good. And I cancel the factor of pi. Yeah. Um. So can you explain when you need to then have a, another shell on top of that? And yeah. in between the two shells, you wouldn't have any current, so does that mean you don't have any? Well, we'll, we'll get to that. Um, so the that, that's really more like the homework, right? Yeah. Yeah. So let me let me finish this problem, and then I'll do the homework problem. Uh, any any other questions about this one? And the really big takeaway, and, and uh, listening to you guys, I think we're we're getting it uh, now because we, we had problems that were similar with Gauss's law. Thinking about what these limits of integration are, that's really important. Okay. So now uh, what we want to do is we want to evaluate the same thing for the region where r is greater than a, and this really only changes one thing, right? What's going to what's going to change when I'm doing the region for r is greater than a? The limits of integration, right? Uh, how are they going to change? So from B to L? Almost, almost. Uh, it, has to, it has to do with A. Zero to A, right? Because the, the area now that, that I'm, I'm passing through is this, right? It starts at zero and goes up to A. So if, if we said, um, what, what does it mean if we say that uh, we want the, the area from, uh, from uh, A to R? That's really um, that area, right? That, that's not really the, the area where the current is flowing. The, the current's flowing through the, this portion in the middle, which is going to be zero to A. So that would change this from uh, zero to A instead of zero to R. And so what that says then is I in is going to be equal to uh, basically the same thing here, only with an A instead of an R here. And so this, uh, this says that this is J zero pi A squared divided by two. And then we can uh, we can evaluate uh, uh, the magnetic field by uh, using the left hand side of uh, Ampere's law. And so what that says then is that this is going to be b vector is going to be equal to um, this is going to be mu naught j zero uh, a squared divided by four pi r in the theta hat direction. Okay. Okay. So again, the, the really important takeaway from this is, is thinking about what, what do the limits of integration mean? There's, there's, the physics is really in the limits of integration because what it tells you is that's, that's where the, the current exists. Okay. Any, any other questions about this one before I move on? Okay, so let's go ahead and go through the homework, and let me uh, let me make sure that I have that um, exactly here. So this is the coaxial cable uh, A D I one goes to the right. Okay. Okay, so I have some coaxial cable here, where we have some I one that flows to the right here and some I2 that flows to the left here where this is a radius of A and this is a radius of B. Okay, uh, let, Let's not make it capital B because we're using that for magnetic field, lowercase b. Okay, so again what we want to do is we want to find what the magnetic field is uh, everywhere and so instead of having two regions now we're going to have three. So we have the region where R is less than A, the region where R is greater than A and less than B, and the region where R is greater than B. Okay. So we can start by writing down Ampere's law. Integral B dot DL is equal to mu naught times I in. And then draw some uh, some Amperian loops here. So this is going to go around like this, around like this, and around like this. Okay. So the left-hand side of Ampere's law is actually always going to be the same here. So this is just going to be uh, b 2 pi r. Same symmetry that we had in this last problem, right? So we, had, we have the same symmetry here. The loop is the same so that the left-hand side is the same. What's going to change is going to be the right-hand side. And so we'll see exactly how this is going to turn out uh, as, we, as we move through the problem. So I in, as always, is just going to be equal to uh, the 
integral of j dot dA. And let's first look at the region where r is less than a. So we see here in the statement of the problem that we have uh, currents and not current density. So what we need to do first is determine what the current densities are. Uh, let's call that those some uh, J1 and some J2. So J1 is just going to be, uh, as a magnitude, just the current I1 divided by the area where that flows. What, what's the area that uh, I1 flows through? Pi A squared, right? How about the area that J2 floats to? So J, J2 is going to go through the outer shell. What's the cross-sectional area of the outer shell? Pi B squared minus A squared quantity. Okay. Um, now, these are magnitudes, but there, there's something in, important that's happening here. And it's, it has to do with the directions that these are going. So this one is going to the right, and this one's going to the left. So if I wrote these as vectors, j1 vector is in the plus x hat direction, and j2 vector is in the minus x hat direction, if I'm saying that uh, conventionally this is the x direction, right? So now that we have our current densities, we're ready to do these calculations to find what I in is. So again, first we're going to do the one for uh, R is less than A. So in this case, this is going to be equal to uh, the integral. And I want to be very explicit here. DA and DA and DL are actually connected via the right-hand rule. I'm going to talk more about this when we get to Faraday's law, but it actually carries through here as well. When, when we define DL, going around in this direction, dA is parameterized in terms of the right-hand rule relative to the direction of the loop that I'm going around. So if I'm going around the loop this way, then dA is going to point this way in accordance with the right-hand rule. So if your fingers curl in the direction of dL, my thumb points in the direction of uh, dA, which is ultimately why uh, we talked about that, that second way to use the right-hand rule to find the direction of the magnetic field if we know the direction of the current. Really, that, that comes from the notion that this dL and this dA are connected via the right-hand rule. Yeah? So if we're given the current direction, basically start with our thumb pointing in the current direction and curl. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And what, what that tells you, it tells you two things. It tells you if, if this is the direction that the current's going, the magnetic field is going to curl this way. But that's also the direction dL is, and your thumb is the direction of dA. Yeah? Can you always define your loops? Like, can't you just define your loops going the other way? Yeah, you could. You could. Um, but the, the important thing is if, if I define my loop going the opposite direction, I still want to have that connection between DL and DA according to the right-hand rule. So if, if I want, right now I have my loop going around like this, right? But if I want my loop going around like this, then I would want to say that DA points this way. It, it's important to connect this vector and this vector according to the right-hand rule. And that, that might be a little bit confusing right now, but it's going to be really important when we get to Faraday's law. And you'll, you'll see that in practice. And what, what happens as a result of the connection of these two things is it, uh, Faraday's law recovers a, a qualitative statement called Lenz's law. But we'll, we'll get there on Monday. And that'll be in the notes over the weekend. Uh, but that, uh, the thing that I'm, that I'm trying to say here is this connection of DL and DA via the right-hand rule is really important. OK. Any other questions? OK. So we have, uh, we want to find I in in this region where R is less than A. We have uh, J, and now we actually defined what the direction DA is because we, we fixed it by, by choosing the direction my loop is going around. And so that says that DA is going to be in the plus X hat direction. So let's just say uh, this is um, plus, uh, sorry, uh, plus X hat DA without the vector. So I, I have all the inform uh, vector information in, in here. So now I can plug this in and do the dot product. This is I1 over pi A squared uh, plus X hat uh, dot uh, plus X hat DA. Okay, this is this is just a constant, right? So this is this is going to be pi uh, i divided by pi a squared integral dA is still the two pi r dr, and where are my limits of integration going to go for r is less than a? Zero. 
same, same as it was before, right? Zero to R. Zero to R. And so when I do that, factor of two is going to cancel. When I do the integral, the pi's are going to cancel. And this says that this is just going to be I divided by pi A squared, or my pi's went away, um, I times R squared over A squared. And so from this, what I can do is I can solve for what the magnetic field is in this region. Let's see if I have some better chalk. Um, I can solve for the magnetic field in this region because now I know I in. I just need to rearrange this. So this is uh, uh, B times 2 pi R is equal to mu naught times I in, which in this case is R, um, I R squared divided by A squared. Cancel my one factor of R, move this over to the other side, and this says that uh, B for R is less than A is going to be equal to mu naught I R divided by 2 pi A squared. Uh, times uh, some uh, theta hat, okay? So far, so good, right? Now, this next step, and, and you might at this point say, well, why is he going through all this trouble talking about uh, the direction of dA and the direction of dL? This next step is going to show you why everything that I did so far was important. So now what we want to do is we want to find the magnetic field uh, in the region uh, for R is greater than A and less than B. And so the left-hand side of, of Faraday's law is still the same, or the left-hand side of Ampere's law is still the same, B 2 pi R. Uh, the left-hand side is still going to be a flux calculation for the, um, for uh, the current density. But now we're, we're actually enclosing two different current densities. Yeah? Why is it now theta hat versus x hat? Uh, oh, because because the magnetic field is going around this way. Yeah, that, and that's that's how I'm I'm bringing back the x hat has to do with um, dA. Yeah, that, that's the cross section, and then the dL goes around that. So that's for the dL and dA just to get there. Uh, this right here. Yeah. Uh, this was to take the the dot products in this this equation here. So once we do that integral, the B factor or the magnetic field. Is around the exactly, okay. exactly, and that's 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 really what this this equation is telling you. And you could write this in a different way, and you, and you can see really the connection between dL and dA if I write it like this. Uh, say that one more time. So when you're trying to solve for the magnetic field, uh -huh. you're moving the, basically the, the dL part after you do the integral of it to the right hand side. Mm -hmm. that carries with it. Yeah, and then how I'm getting this, this theta hat to come back is because in order to evaluate this to find this just the magnitude of B times the, the circumference, I took a dot product. Right. And that dot product had to do with the direction the magnetic field went and the direction I defined the loop, which is in a theta hat direction. It's, it's angular. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Other questions? It, it, it's important if you have questions to ask them because this can be a little tricky. Yeah. Would you, like, with your right hand, demonstrate demonstrate the, the initial two vectors that then give us our... our the DL and the DA. The DL that, that give us our magnetic field theta hat. Sure, sure. So um, we, we know that if, um, and this is something that you can, you can show experimentally if you bring a, uh, a compass close to a, a current, uh, a wire that has a current. We know that the magnetic field is going to go around this wire like this if the current's like that. Right? So it goes, it goes around with the right hand rule. So what that means is, uh, when I'm taking this dot product, what I'm doing is I'm defining dL to be along the path of the magnetic field. And the reason why I'm doing that is so that I can reduce this uh, with a dot product and then take it outside and, and evaluate it like this. Okay. Now, there is a connection between the dL that goes around the loop and the dA that forms the area that's enclosed by the loop. And that's what I'm defining via the right-hand rule to say that if dL goes around like this, dA points this way. Okay. Yeah. All right. Is that better? Yeah. Oh, I, I'm, so I, I, I'm with you up through, through that second. Mm -hmm. Then when you're getting the theta hat, the magnetic field, yeah. um, could you demonstrate the right-hand rule for, for, for that segment? 
Uh, well, this this isn't so much. Um, uh, it's not it's not so much a right hand rule. It's it's more going back to what I started with. Mm -hmm. So I started by saying my loop goes around this way because my magnetic field goes that way, okay. and I'm just I'm throwing in the the theta hat here to say that it's it goes around this way. I, I guess how, how do I know whether to say theta hat or negative theta hat? If it's going around in the opposite direction, it's yeah, uh, it's it, it's a it's a choice of convention. Okay. You you can say that it, it is in in this direction. I'm calling that direction a theta hat direction, as opposed to saying if I go around this way, that's a negative theta hat so, direction. So regardless, so even though the currents are flowing in different directions, you're going to say theta hat for both. Of them? No. Okay. No. That's and and that's 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 what I'm what I'm what I'm going to come into here when I'm evaluating the this this theta hat. It really it, it comes down to the direction of the loop. The direction that I define the loop is going to be the same, but because the direction of the currents are different, oh, the good. dot product. That's that's yeah. That's exactly why I put this negative sign here. Okay. All right. Yeah, but we'll we'll see that actually in the next step that I'm going through here. Okay. Uh, other questions? Did you have one? Okay. Okay, so when we're finding I in for this second region, we're still doing this flux calculation, uh, J dot DA. Uh, but the thing that's, uh, that's different in this region is now I have two current densities here. So really what I need to do is I need to break this apart because what I want to do is I want to say that there's, there's some current in this region and some current in this region. So if I want to calculate the flux, it's really two integrals. So the first integral is the integral from 0 to A, right? It goes, it goes up to the boundary of, of the first current of J1 dot DA. And the second one is going to be the integral from A to what for J2? R. Good. So this is going up to the variable distance, R. Okay. So this is going to be 0 to R. And now uh, this, is, this is getting at exactly what you're asking about here. Um, because my, uh, my DA, I'm defining to be in the positive x hat direction, uh, and my current densities, one is going in that direction, the other one's going the other direction, I'm going to get a negative sign out of this one. So let's, let's plug in our current densities and see that explicitly. So this is going to be the integral from 0 to A of I divided by pi A squared x hat dot x hat uh, DA plus the integral of uh, from um, a to r of pi, uh, i2, this is an i1, i2 divided by pi b squared minus a squared uh, x hat with a minus x hat dot x hat da. Okay. And so what we're seeing here is that we're, we're getting a negative sign from the second one because the da vector that I defined is to the right and the current density goes to or sorry, how are you guys looking at this? The DA vector goes to the right and the current density goes to the left. Okay. So now we can, we can evaluate this. This integral right here is just going to give me the total current that's flowing through the inner wire. This is just going to give me I1. This integral right here, we can, we can say that this is uh, DA. DA is going to be uh, uh, 2 pi r dr. This one is going to say that this is going to be uh, i2 r squared minus a squared divided by b squared minus a squared. I don't want to spend too much time doing that integral, but you can, you can check that uh, with a negative sign, right? Negative sign comes from the dot product. And so in the end, what we end up seeing is that um, b times 2 pi r is going to be equal to mu naught times i minus i2 r squared minus a squared divided by b squared minus a squared. And so b, and now I can, I can bring back my, my theta hat that I had, I had defined with this dl here. Um, b is going to be equal to mu naught divided by 2 pi r times, uh, this is an i1, i1 minus i2 uh, times r squared minus a squared divided by b squared minus a squared in the theta hat direction. And you'll, you'll realize something, I think this is kind of what you're, you're getting at. The magnetic field should be in the opposite direction for what, uh, for the currents, right? Because one's going to produce um, uh, a magnetic field that's into the board above the wire, and one's going to produce one that's out, uh, out of the board. And in doing the dot product like this, this is, this is how I'm, I'm showing that, because you have this negative sign here in the end. Okay. 
Now, the last region that we need to consider is the region where R, R is greater than B. And again, this, is, this only really changes one thing. What's, what's going to change when I do the region where R is greater than B? What about the R? That's going to be the bound. Yeah, so the, the, this R upper bound, instead of being an R, it's going to be a B. Right? Because that's, that's how far this, this one goes up to. This one still stays the same. And so when I do that, what I end up finding is that this term is going to be b squared minus a squared divided by b squared minus a squared. And so this whole thing is just going to become b vector is equal to mu naught divided by 2 pi r times i1 minus i2 in the theta hat direction. Okay. Now, here, I1 and I2 are not equal, but I wanted you, you guys to think about what, what's going to happen if I1 and I2 are equal? Yeah, there's no magnetic field. So why is that, why is that important for um, some application if you, if you want to like, build some piece of equipment? Yeah, because if, if I don't have a, a magnetic field, we already found out that magnetic fields uh, um, create a force on on uh, on currents. They also uh, move charges. If the charges are they they impose a force on a charge if the charge is moving. Um, so if we want to build something uh, that that's very sensitive, we want to minimize the amount of magnetic fields that are that are going through it. And one way to do that is to use coaxial cables. Yeah. So could you use a magnetic field to like hold charge in place in a wire or build up charge or something? Is that um, you you could you could use a magnetic field to direct charge into a particular direction. But you couldn't like, but, like you know, Yeah, you could do that with an electric field. Sorry, where you're like but the, yeah, yeah. The, the problem with with trying to do that with a magnetic field is that in order for there to be a force on something due to a magnetic field it needs to be moving. So you can't you can't use a magnetic field to force a charge to be stationary. But you, what you can do is if, if you if you have like charges all over the place and you, you want to concentrate charge over here and they're they're moving around, you can apply some magnetic field to, to force them to, to move to a particular region. So what happens then if you have a magnetic field that's moving against the current of a of a wire? Does does the I mean it seems like you know the charge would slow down, but then. You know. it, it would if it was an electric field, okay. but the magnet, and that's the weird thing about uh, electric fields versus magnetic fields, is the way that they impart force, or the, really the direction they impart force. And um, I don't want to spend too much uh, more time because I want to get started on the questions. Um, but think about think about this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What does it, what does it mean if the velocity and the magnetic field are in the same direction? I'm sorry, say again. What does it mean if the velocity or the current are in the same direction as the the magnetic field? Then the then, uh, then the yeah. magnetic field is going to be directing it sideways to the direction of the current. Right? The uh, magnetic field goes this way, current goes this way. What's a cross product? Yeah. Oh, it's zero. It's zero. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, and it's weird because you have some intuition that says, well, if I have a field going the same direction as the direction something's moving, it should like kick it a little bit or, or move it like that. But that's actually not how the magnetic field works. That's how the electric field works. What if there's a magnetic field from, that's produced by some other charge you know, on another wire or another thing, and then you bring that close enough to, to, for that magnetic field to affect the... Yeah, yeah. And that, those, are, those are situations that we'll, we'll actually uh, do some calculations with. Yeah. So yeah. if you have a space where electric field is zero kind of based on this question, would the whole the electric field being zero, would that mean the magnetic field would be zero as well? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Um, it, it kind of depends on what, what your what your arrangement is, but really the, the thing to take away from you know what's what's creating a magnetic field versus what's creating an electric field. An electric field is produced by stationary charges. Magnetic fields are produced by moving charges. And so the question, if, if, you want, if you want to have a, a region where you have an electric field and a magnetic field, you have to have some stationary charges and some moving charges. If you want only an electric field, just have stationary charges. If you want just a magnetic field, just have moving charges. Yeah? Is there ever, like, typical regions where, like, the magnetic field would be zero? Like, how, like, in a conductor, the electric field would go zero? Uh, that's a good question. Um, that... 
in terms of a material, um, that, that gets that gets a little bit beyond the scope of what we're going to, going to talk about. But this has to do with um, uh, paramagnetism, dimagnetism, and the way that you can say a material a material is uh, uh, you can magnetize a material. Um, but we're not we're not really going to talk about that. But there there are materials. So for instance, you could have, um, and and really like if if a if a material is magnetized, in a sense, it's kind of like thinking about an insulator that I can put charge in it and it stays there. If you if you magnetize a material, what you have is all these little current loops going around that that produce a constant magnetic field, or depending on the arrangement, it, it produces uh, some magnetic field that that's fixed and it stays that way. As opposed to uh, there are materials, um, and and the thing that makes it, it it difficult to think about is there's there's not there's not a magnetic analog to electric charge. So so when you think about a conductor for for electric charge, the charge is can move around and that because of Gauss's law has, has some consequences but there there are no magnetic charges classically speaking um, that you can talk about in that same way. What if you have no current? Uh, if you have no current that just means there's no magnetic field. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Other questions? Okay so uh, let's go ahead and get started on the the work for today and then we'll come around and uh, answer your questions if you have. Did you have a question already? Yeah.